Concordia University is pleased to have as its 2012 commencement speaker, Mr. T. A. Watson, known to many as Dr. Inspiration. Mr. Watson has a powerful story of perseverance in the midst of enormous social, economic, familial, and personal challenges, and stands as a remarkable example of how much one person can overcome and accomplish if given an opportunity and a faith to believe. He is an accomplished educator, consultant, and public speaker, and is the author of A Face of Courage. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Tommy Watson. Well, good morning, Concordia. This is a beautiful Saturday morning. Good morning, Concordia. Good morning. Fantastic. You know, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I want to thank uh, Dr. Reese for having me, um, Dr. Chapman for making the connection. And you talk about leadership for a university, it doesn't get much better than that. Also, I want to extend a, a thank you to uh, board of faculty, uh, excuse me, board um, members here, also the faculty and staff, and of course the families, and a great day for your students. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> I know that your efforts have um, been tireless been up many nights, making many sacrifices away from your families, uh, jobs. So a lot has gone into this day for you. So I, I wish you continued success after this. Now during my brief, I have eight minutes to do this here, eight minutes, I want to talk to you about the subject of staying motivated beyond graduation. And I will do this by sharing a little bit about my own personal story, and then also giving you three tips that I think will come in handy for you as you leave and go on uh, today. So my journey, to college, uh, began in Denver, Colorado, growing up to parents who were heroin addicts and professional shoplifters. And as a result of their behaviors, <clears throat> by the time I was in third grade, I had lived in three foster homes, three crisis centers, three different motel rooms, lived with my grandmother three times, and watched my parents go off to prison three times. Found myself in third grade with the only ambition of wanting to lead the local gang in my neighborhood. By eighth grade, found myself in a situation where my family and I were evicted from a house in front of all my friends and where I spent the last uh, year of my eighth grade year, entire eighth grade year, in a motel room with eight other people for my entire eighth grade year of school, six of the adults of drug addicts. By the time I arrived here to play football for the University of Minnesota, I was homeless and I lived in 25 different locations back home in Denver. My mother and father were in prison. My little brother was in prison. My grandmother was my last legal guardian, was in a nursing home, suffering from Alzheimer's disease. My oldest brother was back in Denver involved in gangs. My oldest sister was back there on crack cocaine. My second oldest sister was in foster care in Iowa. And my little sister was living with my aunt. We had just enough room for her. I arrived here to play football for the Gophers and had no home address back in Denver. I got here, had one or two options. I was either looking at the NFL or education. Which one do you think I was banking on? The NFL. Almighty God had another plan for me. And I'd get injured, went on, struggled to graduate, uh, became the first person in my family to ever attend college and graduate from college. And after getting that first degree, I said, wow, the schooling thing is kind of fun. I'll go back and get me another degree. So I went back and got another degree. I said, hey, I'm gonna go back and get another one. I'm getting an advanced graduate degree. Now today I'm completing my doctor of education. So when things get tough, remember school is fun. Don't stop here, all right? So in regards to my three tips I want to leave you with here today, um, the first motivational tip I want to share with you is to remember what it is that you value on this journey. Great author uh, Viktor Frankl says that the motivation engine that powers human existence is the pursuit of meaning. Last year around this time, I was serving as a school principal at my school, beloved school principal uh, in the city of Brooklyn Park. And I decided that I, I enjoyed being a principal, but I loved motivating people. And I went home and told my wife that I was leaving my $120,000 a year job to pursue motivational speaking. You can imagine what the conversation was after that. <laughs> Wasn't too exciting. But I'll tell you, a year later, it was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. I'm living a life that's very, very meaningful, purpose, and I get a chance to have an impact on a broader scale. So one, remember what it is that you value. Two, vision. If you're going to stay motivated, you have to have a vision. Ancient scripture says that without a vision, people perish. 
And I'll tell you that if you don't have a vision for your future, someone else does. And we may not necessarily like the vision that someone else has. So keep that vision in mind. And then lastly, to take time to verbally affirm yourself. We live in a, a world today that um, we're bombarded with negative information constantly. So be proactive about affirming yourself in a positive way. And remember, whatever the brain hears over and over and over again, it begins to believe, no matter whether it's pos positive or negative. And finally, I'll end with this quote here by my favorite <clears throat> shoe company, Nike. All right? <clears throat> quote says that the man or woman who thinks that he can and the man or woman who thinks that he cannot are both right. Repeat that one more time. The man or woman who thinks that he can and the man or woman who thinks that he cannot are both right. The question is, which will you be the choice to make when you leave here today? Will you choose to be that person who thinks that they can or the person who is suffering from doubt and believes that they cannot? I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Thank you very much for having me. I believe that was eight minutes. God bless you and have a rest, great rest of the day now.